What's poppin' y'all? Welcome back to my channel. I'm in my LA space. Um, I've been here for a while, actually. It hasn't been ready for months, but we finally put it together and I made some really cool DIYs that I wanna show you guys. Some DIYs that I think you guys can make for your room decor or anywhere in your house and they were all so easy to make. I'm so proud of all of these. They make such cute statements in this room so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you wanna see how I did all of these, keep on watching. Let's get started. what I want to show you is this really cute pineapple trash can. I got this basic trash can online for $10. To decorate this, I actually found these fake flowers that I found at the dollar store. I literally just ripped off the leaves and just started gluing them at the top of the trash can to form the pineapple top. I glued the first one in the middle and I started gluing the rest down in a circular pattern to form my pineapple top. To make this steady, I ended up taping down the trash can lid. I used a glue gun by the way. I added a few glue dots to hold the shape of the leaves. As I got closer to the top of the trash can, I actually cut some of the leaves so that it could form dimension and levels. Once I got the desired look, I actually ended up taking a little strip of the same leaf and I wrapped it around the bottom just to clean it up a little bit and cover their imperfections and blend it in with a trash can. Okay, now it's time for a little pineapple phase. Y'all know I love to give my pineapples characters. I am obsessed with pineapples. I wanted to give Penelope vibes. So I drew some little eyes on her, a little face, and she was really cute. I guess you can say Penelope had a little baby. I used a good old permanent marker to draw my little face on and don't worry about imperfections because you can always use acetone and a q-tip to fix it. At the bottom of my trash can, just to make the pineapple look a little more real and give it that touch, I went in again with a permanent marker and I just drew a bunch of V's just scattered around the trash can. So this is little Penelope's baby. Comment down below what you want to name her. I'm so excited to feed her some trash. <laughs> Queen of trash. She is so cute. This is one of my favorite pieces. For my next DIY, I need some organizing space. I want to upscale my Lazy Susan into a three-tier organizing shelf. I got all of these at Dollar Tree for a dollar each, so it's a steal. The very first thing I did before I assembled this, I took some sandpaper and sanded these down just so the paint could grip on easier. Next, I'm gonna assemble this. I took my candlesticks and kind of just drew where I wanted it to go. I actually measured this and made sure that the candlestick was right in the middle and I just took them on with some good old hot glue. Once my candlesticks were in place, I glued them all together and we have our tears. And now we're going to paint this. I just got some paint samples and this one is called Morning Sunshine, a beautiful shade of yellow and I'm just gonna go in with my paintbrush. I'm going in with my very first layer. This one definitely took about three layers. This was my first time painting on metal, so I got some of those rust spots where it didn't really cling on, but that's why I went in like three times and it came out pretty good. Lastly, when everything sealed, I went in with some Mod Podge to seal it up. And lastly, I'm attaching my Lazy Susan to the bottom of my tears. So this is the final product. I've honestly moved this around so much. She has a lot of purposes. I've put craft supplies on her. She's actually been in my kitchen at one point with fruit. So it's definitely very versatile and you can use it for many things. Next up, I wanna show you how I made one of my favorite wall art pieces in this room. I wanted to use different craft supplies that I use on the daily in slime and crafting and just make it different, make it fun, make it crafty. So we're gonna start with a C, we're gonna go in order, and we're gonna make a bunch of pom-poms. There's a million ways to make pom-poms, and they're all a pain in the butt, honestly. They all <laughs> take some time. 
I actually followed a tutorial to make these pom-poms. I'll link it right here. Basically, I cut out two C's from cardboard. Once I had the two C's, I cut a piece of yarn. All right, y'all pay attention because it's about to get complicated. I placed the yarn in between the two C's. I made sure to leave yarn poking out the ends on both sides so that I can grab it later. And then held those together while I wrapped those two C's in yarn. You kind of want to make a croissant. It's going to get nice and fat. Flip it around and just get a good grip, whatever is most comfortable because you're going to be wrapping for a while. Also, take in mind, the fatter your croissant, the fatter the pom-pom is going to be. We don't want any scraggly little pom-poms up in here, okay? Once I had my fat little croissant, I pulled out the little tails that I left out and pulled them as hard as I could. As I held onto the yarn tails, I used a seam cutter to gently wiggle and cut around the outside edge of my yarn croissant. Once I have enough of the yarn cut, I'm going to tie my loose ends before I forget. This is going to add some stability while I'm cutting. Once you've cut all of it, you just pull it right out of the sea. And this is how your pom pom is going to look. She looks a little rough, but that's why we have scissors. We're going to give her a little trim and make her look nice and fluffy. I made a bunch of different colored pom poms and just repeated the steps a lot of times. This might actually take you several hours. Working with pom poms is really hard, but it's so worth it. They are so cute. Once you have all your pom-poms ready and trimmed, we're simply just going to glue them on with some good old hot glue. I gave her some grooming. Looks like a fresh groomed dog. A dog made out of pom-poms. Oh my god. Drift Pom is screaming, shaking. <laughs> R is for roses. Is it my wedding day? No, sweetie. I got these from the 99 cent store, which by the way, they have everything. I honestly just grabbed different flowers, just random different flowers, and I'm just ripping them right off. And I just glue these all over my letter. And here she is. Next up is one of our E's. What would this be without any type of slime supplies? What better than some rainbow foam beads? This was super easy. I covered my E in Mod Podge and just laid down my foam beads and pressed them in. And there it is, super easy, super quick, and one of my favorite ones, honestly. Next up, the letter A. This one is so easy. I feel like they were all really easy, honestly, except the pom-pom one. I took a bunch of colorful buttons and I just, boom, I just slapped them right on to the A. That's really all I did. I started stacking them a little bit. I started off with bigger buttons and then I kind of moved on to the smaller ones and just kind of scattered them everywhere. Although this was the easiest to do, I did not know buttons were low-key so expensive. <laughs> Even a little random pack of buttons can run you anywhere from $6 to $12, which was kind of crazy. And there she is in all her button glory. And the tea for the evening, the letter T. I took some crayons and I glued them down in random order just to mix and match the colors. They obviously didn't fit perfectly, so I ended up cutting some of the crayons to get that perfect shape. Do not forget to ask for help if you're not comfortable with using sharp materials. Children, ask for adult supervision. And that's about it. Super quick, super easy, and so freaking cute. Crayons make the cutest DIYs. Last but not least, our final E. This one is going to be made out of washi tape. I got all my washi tape at Michael's as well. I just went straight across the letters covering them up, and I waited to cut until after so that it would be nice and neat. I just cut the corners so it would lay down flat, and some of them I actually wrapped them around the letter. I 
I love, love, love this statement in my room so much. I feel like it definitely represents my brand. Our model for Craft City is born to create. So I had to put that touch of a Craft City in this room and I just think it's perfect. Last but not least, I am so excited to show you this craft. This one was definitely the hardest, took the longest, but it is the one I'm most proud of. It is a cactus, a freaking cactus. I had, had to have a cactus here in my LA space. I found this really cool DIY by Lily Ardor. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So shout out to Lily, this is amazing. So let's hop right into this DIY. We started off with a planter and some wooden garden spools. I marked where I wanted them at the bottom of my planter and I glued them down with some good old, guess what? Hot glue. This isn't actually what's gonna hold them up. We're just using it for now to hold them in place. Once the spools were down where I wanted them, I ended up using some really strong tape and just taping those sisters down. I want these to be as stable as possible, so I'm actually gonna whip up some plaster and put it at the bottom of this. I just made one small batch. Plaster is what you make chalk with, and it's also to fix like holes in walls and stuff like that. It's a very easy mix once you have the plaster mix, and you just put that at the bottom so that it can really secure them down. I patted it just to make sure it was distributed evenly, and once that dried, I went in with my foam spray. So foam spray is basically used for insulation and walls and stuff like that. You can find it at Lowe's and Home Depot. Once you spray it, it literally turns into a foam. It dries into a hard foam, so you definitely have to keep that in mind because it will expand. I only filled this up about halfway and it expanded to be almost completely full. But it's okay because the foam is easy to cut and I'm gonna shave it down. I'm using a serrated knife or a knife with little teeth on it. Make sure to ask for adult supervision or help if you are a child. I just made sure it was more of a leveled bottom so that I can put pebbles on it later. With my spray foam, I made a leaf over my plastic. I just kind of shaped out a leaf, honestly. That's really all I did. Getting the perfect leaf wasn't really a thought because I know I'm gonna cut this out anyway. So right now I'm just really shaping it out and making it as dense as possible. You see me making two right here, but I actually made quite a few that I actually ended up using at the top of my cactus, which you will see later. It'll all make sense. Now it's time to add some pool noodles. Yes, pool noodles! I cut the pool noodles about two inches above the spools, slid them right on, and cut off the tops. Again, whenever using sharp objects, ask for help. This is one of my extra foam balls that I thought I could use at the top of my cactus. You can see where it laid on the plastic, it dried much smoother and the top was a little rough. I'm just gonna cut out a little circle to fit inside the noodle, kind of like a key would fit inside a door. And once it's cut, I just kind of fit it in there and glued it down and it was nice and snug. And once it was glued down, I went in with my serrated knife and shaped it. I did the exact same thing to the second cactus and cut to shape. Next up, I went in with a box cutter and it's time to cut the edges out of our cactus. This is really hard to explain, but you know, we're giving it dimension. I'm basically just cutting in kind of like V's everywhere, just really long V's. Now you can see that the shape is coming along. I cleaned it up a little bit because now we're going in with a little bit more of that plaster of Paris. In the least tutorial, she actually glued down the noodles, but I actually found them easier to just stay loose. That way when I'm putting on the plaster of Paris, I can move them. When mixing plaster of Paris, make sure to mix in small batches because this stuff dries really quickly. Make sure to use a bowl that you don't mind throwing away because you're never gonna be able to use this after. The smoother that you apply the plaster, the easier it's gonna be to sand later. So make sure to put it on as smooth as you can. I'm gonna start shaping up my foam leaves. This stuff is actually super easy to cut. You just have to be careful because there's spots that are not as dense and have holes and you just don't want it to slip and cut yourself. I started off just cutting freehand, but I actually found it easier to just take a marker and mark where I wanted to cut. And these are a couple of the leaves that I have to choose from. I ended up going with the smaller ones. The big one was like way too big. The smaller ones were cuter. Do not forget to plaster these babies up. It definitely takes a few layers, but this stuff dries pretty quick. So you're just adding layers onto layers and it becomes nice and thick. I'm going back 
to the cactus and keep layering on that plaster of Paris until I get the nice thickness that I want. And once that dries, which is pretty quick, I go in with some sandpaper and sand that baby down. Get those rough edges smooth, honey, and this is when it really comes to life. And of course, do not forget to sand your little leaves as well. Next up is the fun part. We're gonna go in with some dark green paint. Get that right into the creases, get it everywhere, honey. Put a nice layer and cover it all up. Now we're going in with some light green paint and we're gonna put this on the outer edges to add some dimension. Make sure to blend this out so you don't get any big streaks. She's starting to come together. This looks so realistic. Ah, it's just, it's so good. Next up, we're gonna add the little pricklies, the little spikes. I'm actually gonna use the paintbrush I used earlier for my tears. You actually don't need the paintbrush to be yellow like this, but since I had it, I was like, this is perfect. We're cutting up a bunch of tiny little hairs and we're gonna glue those right on. I went in and dotted some Mod Podge onto the edges a couple at a time and just placed the little pricklies randomly and see where they stuck. Do not forget to stick on your leaves. I just kind of added hot glue around the edges until it really stuck in there. And do the same steps with the pricklies. And once we're done with that, we're gonna clean up our base a little bit. We actually used a vacuum to suck everything out of the inside of this. And also, all the plaster of Paris that got around the planter, do not worry. Just add some water on that baby, clean it right up, and it comes right off. And I just poured some simple black pebbles at the bottom to cover up the foam. Once it dried, that was it. And it's the one I'm most proud of, so shout out to Lily. Girl, this DIY is amazing. with this new workspace. I can't wait to make so much content in here for you guys. Just being in this fresh new room, it just feels so refreshing and I just wanna make so many freaking videos and I just love it. I hope you guys enjoyed these DIYs. They were so easy to make. Out of all room decor videos that I've done, which is like not that many, honestly, these are my favorite ones. And it's still a work in progress. It, I think it looks super cute right now, but I'm not done. There's still a lot of stuff that I wanna you know, add and shift around and just make it nice and give it a touch of me, you know. There's definitely stuff I wanna move around. The lighting is not complete, but I wanted to show you guys some of the DIYs that I've made to fill this room. If you guys recreate any of these, make sure to tag me on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.